You're on. All right, I'm Ross. This is a 386. 386 Pete with an ISX CM871. And we're going to do an EGR tune up because it's definitely not running good. So, all that crap I talk about on the internet. We're going to do it today. I'm going to make a video. Because everybody asked me to make a video. Yes. So, I don't know how to make videos. <laughs> but I'll work on the motor while somebody's recording. There you go. <laughs> Anyways, come over here. Start out, I guess, explaining some of this stuff. I guess this is all the stuff the, what, the dealers and the engine shops just don't want you to know because that's how they rape you with new turbos and new EGR valves and DPF alarm after DPF alarm after shop after shop after, oh my God, I spent $30,000 and it still don't run right. right. Right? I mean, that's basically what it is. Yeah. And it's stupid because every motor does this. Every ISX 871 does this. Every one of them. And how you know if it's ISX 871? It's because the way it's designed. You have the intake here, and you have this little thing that says hot on the side coming down here. The older 870 does it, but not nearly as bad. Same thing, EGR problems. It has a tube coming up this way and over across the motor for the EGR. So the EGR on this truck goes down around the back. That's how you can tell an 871 from an 870. So I'll start out with, everybody asks me, where's those sensors? Where's, these, where's the sensors? The IMAPs is intake, manifold, air pressure, slash temperature sensor, I think it's the proper name, or MAP sensor. What it does, it's right here. I'm going to come zoom in on this. I am zoomed. Like this? Mm -hmm. Down. Angle. Looking at it from down there, this is the IMAP sensor. Okay, it's got one bolt holding it, a little cross plate, square top kind of hard to get out. It's got four plunk, four wires going to it. What that sensor does is it tells the computer, the ECM, how much air pressure is in the pipe coming around from the turbo. And air pressure is the life of this thing and the fuel mileage and you know, power and everything else. So when you push your foot down, you don't get no power. Well, it's either that sensor or the turbo. Uh, the shops always say it's a turbo. But uh, quite often it's not. Most of the time it's not. That sensor right there is the easiest part of the EGR system that you can take apart to check to see if you've got problems. Um, yeah. Um, so if you have problems with your EGR system, then you can take that one sensor off and if it's you know jammed up and really dirty and covered with soot and carbon then you know the rest of the system needs to be serviced if it's clean it's probably not too bad so that's kinda how you um, you do it that's why I always start there but anyway before we take it off I'll kinda explain all, all, most of the sensors involved with this the IMAP sensor or the MAP sensor through the computer controls the boost pressure of the turbo, which tells the turbo how fast to spin. Um, and then you have this one right here, this sensor. That's the um, delta P sensor, some people call it, or the EGR differential pressure sensor. And what it's doing is it's, it's measuring the differential pressure across this pipe where the exhaust gas comes into the intake, EGR. It measures how much is flowing. This sensor, through the computer, indirectly controls the EGR valve, which is... I'm going to come down here and show where the EGR valve is. Here. Right down here. That's the EGR valve for the 871 engine. It's on the other side for the 870, but it's on this side for the 871. That valve controls how much exhaust comes back into the intake for the EGR. Along this pipe, as well, is you have an EGR temperature sensor right there and it's got a little plug which is right here I call that the magic plug you unplug that on some engines it'll shut off the EGR um, you unplug that on the this engine on a Peterbilt or a Volvo and it shuts the engine down but if you do it maybe on an international or something it shuts off the EGR get a check engine light so if you have problems with the EGR I'm not telling you to run around like that but 
you have problems with EGR, you think it might be the EGR related, you can unplug that sensor. If maybe you have an engine that will allow it, you don't get a shutdown code, test drive the truck and see if it improves your power performance problems, etc. But, you know, I call it the magic plug because some people figure it out you just unplug it. So, we're not going to plug it. We're going to fix it. We're going to fix EGR just like it is. Because that's what you should do. Um, this sensor gets plugged up. That's the delta P, or differential pressure sensor, about every 250,000 miles, along with the IMAP sensor. These tubes leading to it get clogged up. This tube gets clogged up, and they get clogged up with soot and carbon because it's all coming from the exhaust. This tube, this pipe, that temperature sensor, and inevitably, the main intake, which is the airflow to the engine, this, this pipe from here all the way to the block gets clogged as well. It also, uh, inside the block, on the other side of that, where it meets, gets carbon, carbon buildup as well. But I don't recommend, you know, your average Joe getting in there and trying to clean it on the inside of the block, although you can put your hand in there. Because if you knock something loose, it goes into one of the cylinder heads, and then, and then it, um, it ends up getting stuck in one of the valve seats because maybe you knock a piece, piece of chunk of carbon loose, goes through the cylinder head, ends up in a valve seat, valve doesn't seat, you know, you got problems. So you don't want to mess around uh, inside the block, but we're going to clean it all the way to the block, which is going to help tremendously. It always helps tremendously. After 250, 300,000 miles, uh, typically the engine will lose power, um, you'll lose fuel mileage. You know, I've heard people complain that they only get five miles to the gallon if they drive empty or loaded at 70 or 55 or, you know, they only can seem to get the same fuel mileage all the time. That's a good good sign of EGR problems, EGR clogging. Um, need the EGR tune-up along with a bunch of other things. But, you know, you, you, it can be severe. It can be um, turbo, turbo lag, turbo actuator alarms, turbo alarms, EGR valve faults, EGR alarms. Ironically, you don't get... Unless it's just really, really horrible, you don't get um, Delta P alarms or IMAP sensor alarms. Those are rare, uh, comparatively. So, uh, what ends up happening is you take your truck to the shop, and you get you also get a lot of regen alarms on your DPF, which you know holds your soot because it's creating more soot. The more this gets sooted up, the worse it gets. The more soot it produces. So it's like a runaway train effect. As that gets worse. More soot's produced, more soot gets in there, more soot's produced, it gets worse, and eventually uh, the excess soot builds up in the DPF. You get DPF alarm, regen alarms, park regens, and it just keeps going downhill and downhill and downhill until it starts to kill the turbo uh, the way the turbo operates. It doesn't kill the turbo per se, but it kills the way it operates, kills the way the EGR valve operates, and just makes a mess of everything. And I think that's the nightmare that most people try to avoid and this solves it what we're going to do today but uh, I don't think the shops want it either don't want you to know how to do it or they don't want you to do it because I haven't seen a dealer or an engine shop yet that you can just take your truck to and say I need an EGR tune up I need you to clean all this stuff out and fix my engine what happens they take it in the shop they connect their computer to it and they tell you you need a turbo they tell you you need a DPF they tell you you need everything but what's wrong and that's really that's bad so that's this side of the motor as far as the EGR is related around the other side of the motor we're also going to take a look at I took the, the air filter off already going to the turbo so I can just make some room and uh, this sensor right here you might want to zoom in um, this sensor right here kind of hard to see that piece of plastic over the top. Um, it screws off like that. You're going to pull the plug off and unscrew it. That is the exhaust back pressure sensor. <coughs> the exhaust comes off the manifold here from all the cylinders. And right here, right here, is a little crossover tube. That tube feeds that sensor. What happens is this sensor about every four to six hundred thousand miles on the engine starts to give false readings and starts to go bad and the tube feeding it as well
quite often gets clogged up with soot and carbon just like the rest of the motor. And so when we do an EGR tune-up, because we're going to do so much work to the other side, every quarter million miles, 250K, I recommend to go ahead and check this and clean that as well. Um, that's pretty, pretty simple and easy to do. Every 250,000 as well, uh, you know, your after-treatment injector, because you get soot and carbon buildup in the exhaust here, the after-treatment injector, which is up under here, that little thing there, that's the doser injector, or after-treatment injector. Um, the inside of this pipe gets full of carbon, and what it has is, it's got a little tip on it with a ring that it seats down in. Of course, it's a lot smaller than I'm showing here. And a little tiny orifice or hole opening where it sprays fuel into this pipe for, to do the, uh, a regen. The fuel doesn't ignite here. The fuel sprays into the pipe. There's very low oxygen here. So the fuel doesn't quite ignite here during a regen. It sprays into the pipe. <coughs> it gets pushed down through the with the exhaust gases down under the engine out to the DPF where if the if there's there's the DPF and you have the DOC, which is the catalytic converter for a truck, diesel oxidation catalyst. Um, it first goes through the DOC. If the DOC is plugged up with soot, it may the fuel may collide with the front of the DOC and ignite. Once it collides with something, it'll typically ignite. It starts to build up on the surface of something, it'll typically ignite the fuel. So if the, if the DOC is clogged up on its face, pretty good, the fuel will ignite there. Or if it's okay, because the DOC doesn't really collect soot, it's got bigger holes through it, it's like a filter, um, it'll ignite at the DPF where it's supposed to. It's supposed to only ignite at the DPF, on the face of the DPF, and not here. So, if that's happening, then it, of course, you know, brings the DPF up to about 1,000 degrees, 1,100 degrees, and it basically burns off all the soot and carbon buildup, well, not carbon, but, you know, soot buildup out of the DPF itself whatever other junk it can burn off in there and clean it out. Um, the, D, the DPF itself, take a look at that real quick. Okay, here's the DPF. This section is the DPF. That's the DOC, your diesel oxidation and catalyst. And you'll see that there's a, this is an empty can, just space. There's a temp sensor here, temp sensor in the front of the DPF and a temp sensor in front of the DOC. So when the truck does a regen, if the fuel ignites in the front of the DOC, it'll know it. Or if it ignites in the front of the DPF, it'll know it. Or if it don't ignite at all. And then it also checks the final exhaust temperature to see if it's raising up after it ignites. Because what it's looking for is a difference in temperature from the face to the back during a region cycle to see if, you know, if the temperature goes up here but not here, that means it's not burning all the way through. It's going to want it, that's why it takes about 40 minutes to do a regen, because it's going to want that temperature to build up in the back as well. That's how that works. And the reason why I talked about the DPF is because that after treatment injector is critical for that DPF to keep itself clean. And what it has to do is it has to spray fuel, kind of like a spray nozzle on a hairspray can, in a real fine mist. But this pipe gets built up with carbon after a quarter million miles or so enough, and it's like clockwork, you can almost predict it, that on the face of that nozzle, instead of it spraying, it starts bleeding fuel. And yeah, it kind of works its way down there, but it doesn't do too good a job. Instead of 40 minutes for a regen, it takes an hour or two hours or fails, or maybe it does it once and it doesn't do it the next time. So that's where your problems generally start with your DPF. If all this other stuff is taken care of. So we're going to include that in our quarter million mile EGR tune-up. Okay. Bad thing about this one is it's got coolant line right there on the bottom. So we need to drain coolant out of the radiator if uh, this one's bad. I have never seen this motor, never taken it apart. We did pull your we did pull your IMAP sensor mm -hmm. and cleaned it because you were having such problems. Right. It just was horrible. Mm-hmm. Now how how much better did it make it after you cleaned it? It did make it did make it better. A, a, a difference. I could definitely tell yeah, a difference. Yeah, fuel miles went up. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna pull the IMAP sensor off of this one. It's gonna be a little bit cleaner than normal, but we know it was really bad when we pulled it the first time. So mm -hmm. we're gonna start with that. We're gonna check it. Okay. 